Hey guys, it's Julian, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make crunchy, textured, sort of lo-fi influenced music against all logic. As usual, you can get the full project files, samples, MIDI, presets, all of that from this video is available right at the top of the description, and if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there, because it's already available, and yeah, let's get started. So, the first sound we have going on here is the sample, which sounds like this. So I'll turn off the filter, and I'll actually just turn off all the effects, and you can hear what's going on here. So what this is, is I've taken this sample here. I just chopped out two of those little one bar phrases. And then it just repeats those two one bar phrases over and over. And then what's happening here, as you can see, we have a few effects on here. So what we're doing is we're actually basically just soloing the bass line. You can hear the sample has a really dope bass line to it, and what we can do is just take this low pass and filter it down, and then in doing so, there we go, we're getting a little bit of the mid-range and the high end, which does give it a lot of texture, and I think adds a lot to the groove. But it's mostly just the bass line. So yeah, I've talked about this technique before. This is kind of a technique from house music, actually. This is, like, a lot of times, like, disco house and French house and those tracks where they'll sample, like, a loop like this and then turn it into a house track. This is typically what they do, is they'll have, like, the main sample loop right in your face and then to make the bass line, rather than writing a bass line, you just take the sample loop and do this. And it works really well here because, again, you're getting this really textured, sort of more, like, warm-sounding thing. That's gonna have a lot of groove in a way that you just can't quite get with a programmed bass line. Or even if you played one in live, just sampling it is always gonna give you this kind of feel. And then the effects on here are really just to kind of like accentuate what we're already talking about. So here is like what it sounds like coming straight out of the low pass. So the first thing here would be this compressor, which you can hear is just kind of flattening it out a bit. That is kind of flattening out the whole sample, but the main thing I noticed with this is that some of the little individual bass notes weren't quite, like, as loud as each other. So, if you just take this, you can kind of even it out and get a more, like, flat response. And then it fits a bit better with the kick. Then we have this EQ8. So here's without this. And then with it. So this is just cutting out a bunch of mud that happens around like between 100 and 200 hertz typically. Just kind of cutting that out is a really good way to make sure this isn't going to make the mix too muddy while still keeping that sort of lo-fi feel. You know, you want the lo-fi-ness in the mid-range and high end, but then in the low, low end like this, you don't really want that lo-fi feel. So we're cutting out the mud. Then I have this drum bus just to give it a lot of punch. You know, it makes it really fat and full sounding. And this really brings out the bass too. And then it's just being side-chained to the kick. And yeah, so that's really it. That's how you go about making this kind of a bass line. It's not hard, but it's going to create a cooler and more against all logic style feel if you sample it rather than just writing one in. After that, we have this 808 kick. So yeah, really straightforward. This is just like a super fat, punchy 808 kick. And then I just have it going through a bit of saturation. And yeah, so this is something that I noticed in a lot of the Against All Logic tracks is he just uses typically like pretty straightforward drum machine sounds and then it's combining that with sampled things. So in this case we're using just a simple 808 kick. Nothing too crazy there. And then the way everything is kind of side-chained around this kick.
is what's really giving you, you know, is what's making the kick punch through. Then I have the kick and the bass just in a group together with a bit of drum bus. This helps to kind of glue them together and it really helps if you're trying to get that no fi feel. Here's without this. And with it. So obviously you can hear it's making both of these fatter and warmer, but it's also kind of gluing them together. You know, a big part of the lo-fi sound isn't just the fact that everything sounds a little bit distorted or a little bit crunchy, but it's also like the way the sounds are interacting with each other. And what I mean by this is if you have two sounds that are just in completely different groups with no effects that they're sharing, they're not really going to get kind of like... You know, they're not going to interact with each other. They're not going to be glued together like this where... You can really hear like that kick and bass kind of playing off each other and you can hear the low end gluing together and so the way that you achieve this is just by adding a bit of drum bus or saturation or something like that on the group and again that's going to give you a more lo-fi sound or kind of you know bring out the lo-fi esque qualities a bit more because you're not just getting you know a saturated kick and a saturated bass line you're getting a saturated kick and a saturated bass line that are then being saturated together and getting that sort of processing together and that just really really is the main thing you'll see this is why we have so much grouping happening in this project file is because that's really the main thing that's going to make your sounds sound kind of like that sort of lo-fi glued together sort of feel the next thing we have here is the percussion so it starts with this clap you know, this is just like a super fat, super punchy clap you can see in the waveform. And then I have it going through some drum bus, and then this EQ8, which is just cutting out the lows and boosting the highs a little bit. So yeah, just like a really nice, like 909 style clap that just hits really nicely on top of the kick. You know, like that. Then we have this little shaker, which sounds like this. So what this is, is I actually just took this loop. That one. And then I'm pretty sure it was this, this hit right here that I'm circling with the cursor. But you can see, I've just taken that one, one shot and just gone, chick -chick -chick. it's just playing 16th notes. And then you can see that's just going through a bit of drum bus to kind of make it a bit more crispy, a bit fatter. And then I have a compressor side chaining into the kick. So again, this goes back to what I was saying before, like kind of mixing everything so the kick comes out a bit more. And this is also helping to give this more of like a pattern too, because if we turn off the side chain, it's just da -da 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 like kind of rapid fire. But with this, now you're getting. So yeah, it's giving this a bit more groove as well. And then we just have a high pass filter and an EQ8 boosting the highs. So the high pass is just cutting out any low end, making sure it's not going to get in the way of the kick and the bass. And then the EQ8 here is just boosting the highs a bit to kind of make this a bit sharper. And then we just have these little bells down here. So you can hear these are just these two sounds. The main thing with these, I think, is just how they interact with each other in terms of, like, this one is high and this one's low. It's, like, important to get two sounds like that that kind of sound like they fit together. Versus, like, if these were both in the same pitch or if they were, for whatever reason, just not really fitting together as well. It's just about getting two sounds like this that are going to fit nice. And then the big key here to making these work together is actually this reverb. So here's without this. You hear how without it, they just sound like they're kind of in different worlds, but then all of a sudden we turn this on. And you can hear they really fit together and they really sound kind of more just like even texturally that's what the reverb's doing it's super short the size is really short the k time's really short but then just having that quick like kind of reverb like that is really making a big difference 
in terms of making these sound together and making them sound like they're coming from the same place and then they're just going through a bit of drum bus after that and then on the group of the percussion we just have some drum bus and a high pass so here's without these and then with them so pretty straight up you can see what's happening you know the drum bus again it's all about that the interaction of the different elements so this is making everything kind of hit a bit more and then also like you know, like you hear the shaker kind of duck out of the way a little bit when the clap hits, stuff like that. That's going to make just a really big difference in terms of making everything feel like it's together. And then the high pass is just there to cut out the lows and make sure it doesn't get in the way of the kick or the bass line. And then we have this lead, which sounds like this. So yeah, this is just this pretty simple sort of lead line. I wrote this to the sample, so I'll take the sample and filter it up for a second. So you can kind of hear like, this is just meant to fit really well on top of that sample. <laughs> So yeah, you can hear what's going on there. It's just this little lead line that fits nicely with the sample. You know, this is nice if you have a bass line like this where you're just essentially filtering like a sample. You can just unfilter it and then you have all this melodic content to write a lead line to. So that's what this is. Pretty simple mel melody. Honestly, just kind of walking up the scale and just like, you know, writing something kind of catchy and simple that's going to work. For the sound with this one, it's made using operators. So this is a sound where basically what it is, is it's just some white noise going into a bandpass filter. That's actually all it is. But what we've done is you can see I've got this frequency key at 100% down here on the bandpass. So what's happening is we're key tracking the filter, meaning essentially if we play like a low note, it'll play a low value on the filter frequency. And then if we play a high note, the filter starts to open up more and more. And so, this is how we can play a pitch now. With the filter, but you get this cool kind of like, you know, more textured. Almost like more delicate sort of lead sound by doing it this way. And then the key to this one is two things. One, I have a really high resonance, and then it's the overdrive. So here's what the resonance just like normal. See, it doesn't really turn into, like, an actual note until you just turn the resonance up all the way. And then we put a little bit of overdrive on top of that. And then it just kind of brings out that harmonic a little bit more. So that you can actually hear the note that you're playing. And then after that, it's just a bit of reverb to give it some space, you know. This one's pretty long since this does ring out. You know, it works to have a long reverb there. And then I just have some drum bus to sort of fatten it up and bring out the reverb a little bit more as well. And then finally, we just have a high pass filter. And that is it for the lead. And this is pretty important too. I'll turn it off. All that little like <laughs> happening in the background is just not good. But yeah, we cut it out. And then say for the lead, and then the last layer here would be these atmospheres, which sound like this. So what it is, is it's just this sort of one. Sort of like a field recording. And then this field recording. Of sort of like some chimes, and then we just put those together. And there we go. And you can see on the first one, we don't have any effects. On the second one, I just have a low pass filter and a bit of drum bus. So the low pass is just cutting off a bit of highs. I'll talk about that. I did that on the group as well. You'll really see it there. But I've done that there. And then I'm also just the drum bus. is just to kind of bring this one out a bit. But yeah, and then on the group of these, so we have a low pass filter and a high pass filter. And then they're being side chained. So the high pass filter... It's pretty straightforward. That's just to make sure there's not going to be any lows getting in the way of any of the other instruments in this track. The compressor is just side chaining it so that this is going to sort of bounce off the kick like we were talking about. But then the big thing here is the low pass. So this low pass is actually not doing a whole lot. Here's without it. 
I'm there with it. We can even do a little bit more like that. Again, without it. And then with it. See here when we turn it on, what it's doing is we're just cutting off those like high highs and then boosting the resonance a bit right at the point where we're cutting it off. And you can really hear that once I start to turn it up. You just get this sort of like deeper sound. Like it cuts out those like really highs. So now you just get this nice crispy mid-rangey atmosphere. And if I turn this off, you can hear. See how it's just like a bit too in your face? But then I turn it on and this kind of blends back into the background a little bit more. That's the purpose of the low pass filter. And yeah, this is a really good way to bring out a sort of like lo-fi sound. If you have a sound and you don't want it to be as crisp and sharp, you want it to be a little bit more lo-fi like this, just cutting off those like just the top highs like that while still keeping most of the sound intact is a really great way to do it. <laughs> and yeah, so that is it for the atmosphere and that is also going to be it for this video guys. So I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe and let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the full project files, samples, and mini, and presets, all of that stuff from this video is available right at the top of the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. Thank you so much guys, and I'll see you tomorrow with another video.